gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages, welcome to Jaguar Sports Network, brought to you by brought to you by High Level Media NC. As we have the Jaguars, the three and two lady, three and six lady Jaguars matching up with the three and four Lady Red Hawks from Catawba Community College in Hickory, North Carolina. We're standing by courtside at in Selma at the Richard B. Harrison Gymnasium. I'm Petey Doris, bringing you play-by-play -play today, along with my colleague Craig Green. Craig. Just a few absent days from the Richard B. Harrison Gymnasium, and we're back here for Jaguars basketball on this dreary Sunday afternoon. Raining outside, it's uh, pretty wet, pretty cloudy, pretty yucky out there, but hoping for some hot shooting tonight from the Jags this afternoon as they come in with a three and six record, Petey. They're looking to uh, get off the schneid. They've lost a couple of their last uh, few outings. Uh, hard fought game against Lewisburg College on a Thursday night. But today, they come in here looking to take down uh, Catawba Valley and uh, get back on the winning ways. You know, the Jaguars' uh, last game of the year before the calendar end of 2023 ends. No way to go out, but with a victory, they don't want to look too far ahead of themselves because when they return back to the court, they will face the Red Hawks in Hickory on uh, January 6th, just uh, three weeks from now. But, you know, Craig... A lot, of, a lot of growth we've seen with the Lady Jaguars this season, especially in that last game against a very well-disciplined Lewisburg Hurricanes team. Right here, the, the Jaguars fall all the way down to the wire and fell short seven points Thursday night. But it, it was a team effort in the loss and, and a team effort, you know, fight back. They had chance after chance after chance in that game, and they had at least three chances to take the lead in the second half. They just couldn't get over the hump and get that basket to give them the, uh, the scoreboard advantage. But again, yeah, to your point, Petey, it was a very well-played game by the Jags. I think they played one of their better games of the season, even in the loss, and it's something to build off of today. And I think today is a chance for them to take advantage of a Red Hawks team who isn't playing their best basketball either. I mean, they've come in losing two out of the last three games. They only average 50 points a game. They're going to have a slow, slow pace. This is a chance for the Jags to come out here with their hot shooting and continue it from Thursday and uh, translate it over here to today's game. Craig, and if they could do that, they could easily uh, defeat the Red Hawks by double digits. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there's a little uh, shuffle in the starting lineups as Nylea White will, will not see the starting as she was coming in hot on uh, Thursday night against Lewisburg, you know, Hurricanes. So, you know, seeing her not uh, feeling under, under the weather uh, to start off the game, we spoke with her and she said, well, see, you'll see me in the second half. But, you know, in that game against Lewisburg, she really sets the pace as she knows – she has the vision down the court, and she knows exactly where she's going to disperse the ball as she comes across the timeline. Nalia White, just playing in the second half, I mean, is a blessing in disguise because we thought she was out, but then she said she was going to come and uh, play the uh, final uh, 16 minutes of this game, uh, this final 20 minutes of this game today. And that's a good, that's actually a really good sign for the Jags. I mean, she is their leading scorer, averaging just over 15 points a game, along with uh, shooting. Um, hitting at least one three a game as well. So uh, Nali is somebody who is, uh, the Jags are going to really lean on in the second half. They're going to need her out there uh, when the going gets tough, when the uh, 
you know, when they may get a little tired, a little stretched out, also kind of helps give some of the other players a breather. So in her place today, Desaya Thompson will start for Nalia White this afternoon. And uh, we're just about ready for basketball, PD, as the Jags, again, look to get off the uh, their losing ways. And, and we'll see if Nalia White can contribute in the second half to a win. Yeah, Craig, but, you know, don't want to look too ahead of yourself. College is out, so, you know, this is the last activity you'll see for college for JCC this season as the boys game was canceled today due to a few players from the Red Hawks having COVID. So we've only got one game here, but right now we're going to go ahead and send it to the PA announcers for the national anthem and the starting lineups. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's your starting lineups for the Jaguars and the Red Hawks. The Jaguars start off with Zaniah Thaggard, Milani, Milani Patterson, Zaya Thompson, Elena Randolph, and Maya Smith. As Quatawa Valley Community College Red Hawks come out in their pink jersey unis white numbers trimmed in red the Jaguars in their home jerseys with Jaguars across their chest we'll see how the Jaguars match up against the Red Hawks on this gloomy Sunday in Selma and quickly for the Red Hawks Ariana Scott 5'3 freshman from Hartsville South Carolina Riley Hogg 5'5 sophomore from Charlotte Sabrina Lewis 5'7", freshman from Madison County, Virginia. Angelina Bobbitt, 5'5", sophomore from Chicago, Illinois. And Asatu Balo, 6'0", sophomore 
from Charlotte, North Carolina. And we're underway with Quetaba with the first stab at offense here. The Jaguars threatened with the turnover. Nice defense by Randolph as she steps up on Scott. Hogg looking to kick it to the right wing. They work inside out, great ball movement. Hogg, cross court pass, whips it over to Lewis. And Lewis takes the first opportunity. Quetaba strikes blood first. Good pass by Hogg to find Lewis, and she hit that mid-range jump shot. Made it look very easy. 2-0 to the Redhawks. Tonight's game is brought to you by First Flight Credit Union and Thagger. T Thompson and Thompson losing the ball, and here come the Red Hawks. And multiple op opportunities on the offensive side. Jaguars are one turnover. Randolph says, I'll take the three to start it off, off the hill to iron, and as Pete Patterson gets the Jaguars started on offense. A good way to follow up that shot by Melani Patterson. Got the shooter's roll as well. Now we're leveled right back to where we started, two to two. Great ball movement by the Red Hawks inside, and it's a turnover. Both teams with a turnover. Tigers straight to the <laughs> hole off the left side, and the Jaguars. Wow, what a ball fake by Thaggard as she was coming down court on the uh, left side. Just ball fake the defender. Defender went with her hands instead of with her, and she easily got to the bucket. Jaguars threatened with that front court defense. Every time Sabrina Lewis spins the ball to that left side, Randolph right there to stab it out. Two minutes away here in the first quarter, Jaguars and Red Hawks. On Jaguar Sports Network, Randolph. Jaguars second turnover, Red Hawks ahead. Hogg misses the layup, Randolph to clean it up with the rebound. Randolph sprints in the front court. And straight to the hole, claps the defense and the pass to Thompson was too hard, too much English from Randolph to Thompson. Good look, it just went right through her hands. It deflected through a couple of uh, Red Hawks as well. Little screen on that pass, couldn't catch it cleanly. Hall kicks it to Lewis. Lewis, nice take to the cup and too short. And Melani Patterson ties up the jump ball. Four to two is your score on the first flight credit union scoreboard. Randolph, screen by Smith, kicks it to Thaggard. Thaggard facing a 2-3 defense, and Lewis, Sabrina Lewis with a turnover. That's a fourth turnover for the Jaguars here in the first quarter. Not a good pass right through traffic and easily intercepted, but there we've got it right back. Two turnovers for the Red Hawks as Randolph takes the two to the hole, puts up a shot and falls off the front of the rim. Sabrina Lewis pushes it ahead. And Scott's pass was... Almost off the hands of Bobbitt, out of bounds, but Bobbitt contains. Kicks it to Hogg. Hogg with a deep three, in and out. Thompson with the rebound. Nice reach and rebound for Thompson for the Jaguars. Four to two's your score. Four to two's on the turnover. Jaguar lead both ways. Hogg ahead off that left side. Too hard with a put back and could not stay with it as Scott. So, CD will check in. Coach says she goes by CD along with Alexia Cunningham. Red Hawks do have some numbers, have a numbers advantage. They can sub in a couple extra players that the Jags don't have. And remember, Nalia White, playing with a lower body injury, will only see action in the final 20 minutes. So, that is CD hitting hit it to the floor as she will head to the charity stripe for her first opportunity in today's game. Now it's after a foul by Melani Patterson. So CD uh, Kalia Duke will go to the line for two. Leah Duke makes the first. Four to three. We 
and the lane violation. So we'll stay at 4-3. Randolph guarded tightly by Hall. Sets, Smith sets a screen and Melani takes it to the hole. And Short follows a shot, puts up the shot. It's Melani Patterson. We'll shoot two for the Jaguars. Yeah, good wave by Melani Patterson to follow her shot. That's the second time she's been involved in a second chance opportunity. Bobbitt tried to chop her down on the second one, and now she's at the line for two. The Nets are heated for the Jaguars for the charity stripe. Jaguars lead by three. Six to three. Duke in trouble, kicks it over to Bobbitt. Bobbitt's baseline is cut off by Smith, and Smith picks up the foul. My Smith being a little too physical along the baseline with a CD there, and uh, she was trying to go to the basket. Call the play and bound. She'll turn it. And it is over and back. One official says it's over and back. She reverses her call, so it will stay with Quataba. I believe they're saying the ball was deflected by a Jaguar which is why it would not result in a backcourt violation. And got Lynch coming into the game. Wearing number one with the goggles. So, what, so that was not over and back. is coming off of a foul. So it will be Red Hawks with the ball. I have to go to the full court. And with a fresh shot clock. Lynch driving, kicking. Duke goes to Bobbitt, and Bobbitt's baseline is cut off. She finds Lady in the corner and puts up an air ball. But Jada Lynch had a nice look on that baseline, just overshot the rim. White. Cannot nail it from the corner for the Jaguars. Sabrina Lewis will bring the ball up. Nice vision up the court as she goes to Duke. And Duke, shots deflected by Thagger. She's crossing the five-minute mark here in the first. Smith travels as she looked to put a body on Lynch. Jaguars with five turnovers open in five minutes. Five turnovers for the Red Hawks as well. Not the cleanest basketball so far. Red Hawks missing plenty of opportunities offensive side. Patterson to Thagger. Smith. Great defense down there for Cunningham on Smith as Randolph's runner falls through. Nice little runner by Elena Randolph. Stays with it, got into the paint, found a good shot, and Got the shooter's roll. 427 left. Lynch inside to Bobbitt and Bobbitt's shot rims out. Patterson looking up the court as she brings the ball up for the Jaguars. Picks up the dribble, needing help. Thompson, 17. Footer's good. And a good find by Maylani Patterson to find Isaiah Thompson right there all by her lonesome standing at the free throw line. 10-3, Jaguars with the biggest lead. Bobbitt on the court baseline, trying to take Smith off the dribble. A spin it all around. Lynch, three on the way. You could count it for Sabrina Lewis. Nice stroke by Serena, Sabrina Lewis from the, from the corner over there. The first three by either team in this game converted. As Duke is right on to Randolph. Randolph 
taking it to the hole and draws the foul. Oh, and the basket counts. Nice runner again by Elena Randolph. Went right back to that same shot. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Keep using it. We got a media timeout, 12 to 6. We're going to take it with them. Jaguars lead the Red Hawks on Jaguar Sports Network. Welcome back to Selma as the Jaguars and the Red Hawks match up with Thompson, with Randolph to the line to convert on the end one. As a nice take, Petey Doris, Craig Green bringing you coverage. Randolph makes the end one, and the Jaguars back to a seven point lead. And five points for Elena Randolph. And Randolph giveth Randolph take it away as she makes a three point play. Then she's committed. Then she commits a foul. The second foul on JCC. Kayla First Bell. on her. Kayla Bell checked in after the media timeout. Sabrina Smith with second opportunity three and big rebound for Cunningham and Cunningham converts. First second chance opportunity for the Red Hawks and they cash it in. This time it's Alexia Cunningham doing the dirty work for the Red Hawks. Great defense by the Red Hawks is stopping the perimeter shooting by the Jaguars. Great 2-3 defense. White over in the corner. Inside to Smith. Smith triple team and we got a three second call. Maya hung out in the paint just a little too long. I think they tried to blow the whistle before she caught the ball but they couldn't get it out fast enough. But yeah, again, that 2-3 zone, very effective for Catawba Valley. Let's see if they can go back to it again on their next defensive set. Five-point lead. Can Catawba get with it one possession? Bobbitt loves that baseline on that right side. It turns it over. Is White fighting for the ball. Kick, gets up the turnover and yeah. takes it straight to the hole. Fantastic play by Melani Patterson. Intercepts the pass, jumping in the passing lane. Athletic enough to chase it down court and then go baseline and finish by herself. Great job, Melani Patterson. And now two straight turnovers, Speedy, by the Red Hawks. That's seven for them here in this first quarter. Seven to six on turnovers. Red Hawks with seven. Jaguars with six. There's two minutes and 12 seconds left, but... You can tell the advantages for the Jaguars. Definitely a whole lot faster in the front court than the Red Hawks. And also crashing the boards a lot better. Right now it's a 9-2-5 uh, advantage rebounding for JCC. Nice look on that baseline by Patterson. The Thagger, the Thagger rips one down through the lane. and It's a turnover right in the hands of Cunningham. Good idea, just not very good execution on the pass. The lane was a little too congested for that one to go through. Lewis takes it on that baseline and nice little teardrop. And Lewis showing some prowess. She likes that side of the court. She's been staying over there quite often. Jags need to chase her away from that side. Patterson from the corner in and out and Cunningham pulls down the big rebound. And going out strong was Balo. And Balo finishes, he gets her first opportunity starting in this uh, game. Asatu Balo, one for one. She's going to play a big factor in rebounding for the Red Hawks in this game. Only averaged 50 points a game. Red Hawks ahead to Lewis. And Lewis gets the 
Red Hawks within one. And a good pass down court to Finder as well. Eight to two run for the Red Hawks. They're within one, at an immediate timeout. Bell looking for help, puts it on the floor. Thagger from the left wing, count it! As she was looking for the foul by Bobbitt. Should have got the foul call as Bobbitt ran into her, but the referee decided not to blow the whistle. The way she walks. She Riley Hogg took one too many steps, not knowing the official is right behind her. Looked like she did a little bunny hop before she decided to set and shoot the ball. The referee saw it, just like you said, Petey, and alas, turnover number eight for the Red Hawks. Jaguars have no shot clock, 23 on the clock. As the Jaguars are trying to put a dagger at capitalize on the first quarter. Put up a runner, and Randolph's runner does not fall, but Patterson with the putback. Patterson has been all over the boards in this first quarter. Nice job by Patterson. Lewis's three is off the mark. Jaguars in the first quarter on a 5-0 run. Can they take it? Headed to the second. We'll have it with you in just a moment. Selma, North Carolina is the Jaguars on a 5-0 run lead. The Red Hawks 20 to 14, shooting 46% from the field in the first quarter. Quatab is shooting 31%. Jaguars just one for five from deep Craig as we start the second quarter with the Red Hawks with the ball. Red Hawks as well, one of five from three-point range and six of 19 from the field. Pretty cold shooting for Catawba Valley, which is why they're trailing. And again, the ninth turnover right now for Catawba Valley just happened right in front of us. Jaguars come out in this second quarter, starting Smith, Bell, Randolph, Thaggard, and Patterson. With a five-point lead, nice pass from Thaggard to Randolph, and Randolph. <laughs> That the, the ice is through the veins on Randolph. And the, and the goggles, Zaniah, got, Zaniah Thaggard put the goggles on as soon as she made that pass. She knew exactly what she was doing, and she knew that pass was perfect. Such precision play by the Jags and a great finish by Elena, by Elena Randolph. Jaguars on a 7-0 run. Thaggard, it's a nice, you know, Jaguars have a very... Got a moving screen by Smith. But Craig, looking at the Jaguars, everybody on the court, they are they know how each of them play. Every one of them knows where to move it off the ball. And every pass is crisp and it's there, and they know when to release it, especially with Randolph and Thaggard in the front court. You can't, you know, they know where Smith is going to be, they know where Patterson is going to be every time on offense. Got another turnover. And to your point, sorry, Petey, to your point about uh, the crispness of their passing and, and their execution, three words for you on that. Practice makes perfect. Coach Z would probably come out here and tell you, hey, they're starting to listen to me, and that's why you're starting to see such good quality basketball. Jaguars lead by eight. Just one minute away in the second quarter. Thagger, long range three. Off the mark and pulling down a rebound was Cuttingham. 
Cunningham has definitely been on the boards in this first half as Hall stops the 7-0 run. Cunningham, since she's been in the game, Craig, she's pulled down eight boards. Zaniah Thaggard is That's one player you cannot leave wide open. She took advantage of that and was able to give the Jags a nine-point advantage. Nicely done, Zaniah Thaggard. And Thaggard, you definitely don't want that to, you don't want Thaggard to heat up. Because once she heats up, she's got that nice rainbow arch. And, you know, she'll put the goggles on and back up as she hits. Mm -hmm. And she's got the vision as well to find open teammates. We just saw that last time down the court when she found Patterson, or excuse me, Randolph, on that nice little floater in the middle of the lane. Three from the left wing. And, whoo, it's getting a little cold in here with that shot. <laughs> yeah, Ariana Scott missed everything. It's a reset the shot clock. Slow the ball down, and that's one thing the Jaguars don't like to do. You need to make sure you have the right personnel on the shot clock so they won't have to stop the momentum. I think the pace needs to be picked up for them because, again, uh, Catawba Valley only averages 50 points a game, so they want to slow it down and uh, and be methodical. But, you know, the Jags, we can see, they are pressing the issue here. And as of right now, the Red Hawks can't keep up. Jaguars with the biggest lead tonight. Thagger wanted that three one more time, Craig, as she's stepping into it. Back to Randolph. Randolph straight to the hole, and Randolph loves that runner. Could not connect. Here comes Sabrina Lewis. Reverse layup, and you can count it. Lewis has uh, made a stamp on this game early and often. The leading scorer for the Red Hawks so far this afternoon. Patterson takes the whole team to the hole. And nice and easy off that right glass. Jaguars back up nine. Scott takes it and puts up a prayer in Cunningham. Loses it between her legs. Bell clearing it out for the Jaguars. Right side to Randolph. And it's slowed up with 23. Bell from the, from the distance. And Bell hustles down a rebound. And Randolph from the right wing. Jaguars is overshooting. No rebound. Tagger, Jaguar with three opportunities, three missed chances, and here comes Sabrina Lewis. Right side of Hogg, and Hogg will unleash the three. And Jaguars will slow it up with 6.39 left in the second quarter. Both teams kind of cold right now. Randolph saw Patterson, and Patterson deflected off of a Red Hawk out of bounds. So Bobbitt checks in for Cunningham, so we'll see the see how the rebound and affects the Red Hawks. Yeah, they are playing with just one big out there. Randolph from the corner and Thompson with the putback. They're in the right place in the right time. Jaguars biggest lead, eight eleven. That's where we stand now. Another second chance opportunity. Good chance, good job by the Jags to crash the boards. As this time, Angelina Bobby gets her first two points of the game. Bobby checks in. First opportunity on offense. Takes it straight to the hole. Saw, saw room on that baseline. And finishes with a nice layup. Randolph over to Thagard. Thagard looks for a flash and bell. Nice pass, and the Jaguars clicking all the cylinders today, Craig. And Patterson gets another bucket, increases that lead for the Jags. 11-point lead is the biggest lead they've had in the last couple games. As we get a foul on Kayla Bell. But again, you said it, the execution of the Jaguars offensively is very nice. Defensively, they're doing a good job. I'd like to see them minimize the turnovers. Hogg missed midline, mid range jumpers off the mark. And Kayla Bell pulls down a rebound. And but quite often, you see Catawba Valley going one and out. They're not getting any second or third chances. Patterson! 
Patterson, Patterson, Patterson is on fire tonight. Three for three here in the second quarter. And Coach Z has found something in the middle of that 2-3 zone that she likes. They're going to keep going to it until they can stop it. Hog. And Kayla Bell with her second consecutive foul. An immediate timeout, 33 to 20. It's been all Jaguars here in the second quarter. We'll be right back here. You listen, Jaguar Sports Network. The Jaguars lead on a 13-6 run to open up the second quarter. Six of those 13 for the Jaguars. Melani Patterson. As Hogg stands in. Shooting two and misses the first. The top of Valley's only had one trip to the charity stripe, and that was Hogg in the first quarter as she went up for two and made the first, and the second was lane violation. As Hogg is one for two on that trip. 33-21. Bell did not go through on the cut as Patterson saw Bell cutting. Smith. Lewis puts up a shot as she's fallen down. And Taba Valley to the free throw line to shoot two. That's one lady you're not going to want to foul for the Jaguars is Sabrina Lewis. She's been all offense. She's been the leading scorer for the Red Hawks and putting her at the line, just like you said, not an advantageous thing. However, right there, she did miss the first free throw. Lewis with 11 points right now. Setting the pace for Catawba Valley. Make that 12. Eleven point advantage, Jaguars. Biggest leads, 13 here in the second quarter. Backdoor pass, but a coach was able to get Hogg to step in. Lewis, Sabrina Lewis, cannot connect. And Bobbitt tries to stab it out. Bell coming down. Here come the Jaguars, far side to stagger to Randolph. 4-13 left, second quarter. Jaguars lead 33-20. Listen, Jaguars basketball, Jaguars sports network, Randolph, count it. And a good screen by Kayla Bell to free Randolph up to get that three-pointer off. Nice shot and good work by the teammates there for the Jags. Bob it from the top right corner. This easy turnaround jump shot, too easy if you ask me. Red Hawks get two of the three back that they just lost. Thaggard for the same distance as Randolph. A little too much on it to steer it left. Didn't really mind that shot either. She just didn't get anything on that one, unfortunately. Missed all of everything. 36-24. Nice take on the baseline. And Bobbitt is hot for the opposite baseline she was going to in the first half. Bobbitt, the first three, of, Bobbitt three of four for this game and now three of three on her last three attempts. This one's going to miss everything as well from uh, Desaia Thompson. Head. And the Jaguars with the turnover. 13 forced turnovers by the Jags. Good job in this first half defensively as well. That's what's helped them build this lead. Patterson for the right wing. In and out. 
Nice look as Patterson said, you're not going to guard me. I'm going to take the three. Hog baseline was cut off as she goes left side to Scott and Scott misses. Both teams coming up empty on the last two trips. Thagger, Jack and threes, and it's raining threes. <laughs> you talked about that rainbow three. She's got that beautiful southpaw stroke. She released, caught, fired from the corner. Nothing but the bottom of the net. Jaguars tie their biggest lead. Scott's baseline was cut off by Patterson, but she'll take it to the hole and cannot finish. That's three straight misses for Sabrina Lewis. And another one and out for Catawba Valley as well. Taggart inside. 39-26, just crossing the two-minute mark. Bell putting it on the floor to Patterson. And we got a foul on Maylani. Yeah, unfortunately, Bell couldn't protect the basketball well enough and kind of caused that sequence of events to happen. And Riley Hawk, Hog, back to the charity stripe. And Scott. That's Patterson's third foul. Hog makes the first. Hog four for six for the charity stripe today. Last two minutes of the half, Petey. Want to see how the Jags decide to play this. Will they slow down the pace? Will they continue to push and press and uh, make the Catawba Valley stretch out? 136 left. Jaguars ahead by 11. Oh, what nice a pass. pass inside and great. It's the vision that the Jaguars have today. Look at down low. Maya Smith gets in the scoring column. Who would have thunk it, PD, that in a game like this where the Jags are up by 13, Maya Smith has just two points and she just got them just now. Making it 16. Can they? No. Randolph shot short. 107 left. Bobbitt with numbers takes it herself and says. I'm hot this quarter, why can't I take it? Four for four for Bobbitt. Went right at Maylani Patterson, no fear. Put it up, got it to go. It's a great take on Maylani Patterson with three fouls. Smith. Shot was blocked by Cunningham, 42 on the clock. Jaguars. Five seconds separate the game and a shot clock. Ahead to Bell. Ran off the bell. And you can hear the bells ringing in cell <laughs> Ding, dong. Beautiful pass by Elena Randolph to find Kayla Bell. Get Bell on the scoreboard as well. Lewis. Four straight misses for Lewis here in the second quarter. Patterson. Got away with the travel as that foot slid, but the official was wiping the eyes. Jaguars ahead by 15. And now it'll take us to halftime. Jaguars lead 45 to 30. We're going to come right back here with Stats, Facts, Figures brought to you by First Flight, Federal Credit Union.
Welcome back to Jaguars lead to halftime, 45 to 30 on Jaguar Sports Network against the Quatawa Valley Community College. Lady Red Hawks, Pete Doors, Craig Green here, bringing you tip the horn coverage. Best seat in the house, courtside at Richard B. Harrison Gymnasium. Craig, what a first half from the Jaguars. Jaguars did a fantastic job in the first half. Everybody was getting involved. They did their best to uh, protect the basketball. I mean, 10 turnovers is not what Coach C would want to see, but it's a low enough number to give them and help guide them to a 15-point lead in the break here, which is about six, six or seven minutes until we start the second half. But more of it to come, hopefully. And also one uh, other aspect that we'll see here in the second half, PD, that we did not really, what well, we did, we touched on it in the first half, was will be the reemergence of Nalia White, who will step on the court for the Jags in the final 20 minutes. Nalia was injured in the last game. So she came in today, kind of hobbled with a lower body injury. It'll be interesting to see how much she can give today for JCC. Also kind of give a little break to uh, players like uh, uh, Kayla Bell, who's coming off the bench by herself as well. So you know, Coach Z already spread kind of thin. Don't want to say they have six and a half players because of Nalia's injury, but also want to be fair to how much she can actually contribute. So I want to be able, I want to, uh, you know, I, I'll really be paying attention to that and seeing how they can employ her into the game plan that they've already started executing. Yeah, and that's something I, I quite wouldn't understand why they'd play her a year up by 15. Just let her continue to rest and uh, get healthy for after the break when you go up against Quatabe in Hickory, which will be a whole lot different game, as you can expect. Coach Tisha England of the Red Hawks will have a lot of practicing to do over the break to try to get the Red Hawks to bounce back. But the Red Hawks don't want to look too far ahead as they leave Selma today and they go to Virginia Bleach to play Brian and Strat tomorrow, which is a very well-disciplined and deep team themselves. Yeah, today's the first day of a back-to-back, -back, so you know that's going to play a factor in Coach England's rotations as well. She doesn't want to burn out all of her top players today. Try to, you know, you want to, you know, you got to give it your all, of course, in every single game. But as a coach, you're also a manager as well. You need to be able to manage the minutes of your players and keep them fresh and make sure that no one is uh, too tired, too burnt out because you've got a long road trip ahead of you and another 40 minutes of hell coming tomorrow. Right now, let's take a look inside the box brought to you by First Flight Credit Union. In the first half, the, the Red Hawks shot 33% from the field, 12 for 36. Jaguars shot 48%. 18 of 37. Red Hawks shot 12% from deep, one of eight. Jaguars shot four for 16 for 25%. Jaguars lead on the rebounds, 22 to 15. Turnovers, Quatawa Valley will own the trophy on that side. And the biggest lead for the Jaguars, 15 as they set, 45 to 30. And Quatawa Valley led two to nothing early. Their biggest lead is two. They only led for 36 seconds until the Jaguars tied it off at, at two apiece. But going over to individual box scores, Craig, go ahead and break it down for us with 413 left. Catawba Valley led in the first half by Sabrina Lewis with 12 points, followed by Angelina Bobbitt with eight, Riley Hogg with six, and then they were followed up with Cunningham and Balo with two apiece. Hayden Lynch did not score, and neither did CD as well. Uh, Turner did not see first half action. For the Jaguars of Johnson Community College, they were led three players in double figures, PD. Everybody sharing the basketball and, uh, and, and uh, contributing to this 15 point advantage. The top of those players, Melani Patterson, 14 points in the first half. She scored eight of those in the second quarter. Second leading scorer on the team, Zaniah Thaggard, who has 11 points, has hit three three-pointers already. Followed up by Elena Randolph, one of her best games offensively that we've seen in quite a while. 10 points, five in the first, five in the second. She's followed up by Desaya Thompson, starting in place of Nalia White. She had four points in the first half. And Kayla Bell and Maya Smith, both round out the starter of the uh, the lineups with uh, two points apiece for the Johnson Community College Jaguars led by Coach C. Yeah, Craig, as we talked, it's amazing to see the Jaguars up 45 to 30. 
with Maya Smith with just only two points. It's an incredible factor in this game. It goes to show the team effort put forth by these Jaguars, and it goes to show, just like you said earlier, the crispness of the basketball that they're playing. They're executing at a high level, and when you can have one of your better players and not and, uh, and Nalia White not even touch the floor in the first 20 minutes, and Maya Smith only get two looks at the basket, yet you're up by 15. It speaks volumes to the job that you're doing on the court and on the bench as the head coach and the players. All right, we're 222 from starting here back in the third quarter. We're going to come right back here. You're listening to Jaguars Basketball and Jaguars Sports Network. here, Jaguars and Quetzaba Valley Redhawks. Start the second half. See if the offense can start for the Jags. And Randolph, this is a deep opportunity. Good look at the basket, just not, I couldn't convert it. But uh, I'd like to see what we can see more of from the first half for the Jags. You know, more of what you're doing, forcing turnovers. Making Catawba Valley go one and out. Attacking that 2-3 zone across the middle. As this time, Angelina Bobbitt gets the first two points of the first half for either side, PD. As Bobbitt was hot in the second quarter, and she coming off the bench with four quick points, but she starts second. That's four straight points. And this time it's Riley Hogg gets two after the uh, shot by Randolph was partially blocked. Staggered with the runner and could not connect. 6-0 run to start the second half. And Coach C calls a timeout. She's not liking what she's seeing. Not at all. 6-0 run. Cut him within single digits.
some adjustments at the break, Craig, and they're within single digits, cut the 15-point lead into nine with just 11 off the clock. Red Hawks making a run at it right now. Have got this thing down to three possessions. Jags are going to come out here and have a positive possession after having three negative ones to start this second half. Got to get back to what they were doing in the first half if they can. They're still setting up in this 2-3 zone. Just got to find a way to attack it the same way you did the first half. See how the Jaguars, it's Thompson, Smith, Thagard, Randolph, and Patterson. The floor for the Jaguars. Thagard looking for distance, but pulls it back out. Taking the hole and it's stripped. And they'll tag Lewis with the foul. It'll be her first foul, first team foul. 35-36. Back to Randolph, and Randolph, mid-range jumper's flat. She got her own rebound. Shots blocked. Balo with the block. Hog pushes in the front court, nice pass, and but Sabrina Lewis still cold. Across an eight minute mark. Inside to Smith, and it's punched out by Bobbitt, and Smith puts up an air ball. Yeah, as you can tell when that one left her hands that it was going to fall short. She looked immediately disappointed upon release. No buckets in the last minute and five for Quatawba Valley. Cross court pass to Hogg and Hogg mid-range jumper continues the 8-0 run. Zero points right now in the first two and a half minutes for JCC. They're extremely cold and not producing anything offensively just yet. Thaggard shots off the base plate and Smith Fighting for it and losing it to Balo. Lewis over to Hogg. Hogg fakes the pass as a cutting to Balo. Turnover. It's the first turnover from Top of Valley this quarter. Randolph lobs it into Patterson. Patterson. Two steps to the hole. I love the patience. Love the patience by Patterson to find the lane, go right through. We saw Balo kind of vacated a spot, and Patterson went right there where she vacated and scored. Second turnover for Quatawba Valley. Jada Lynch was fouled. As Randolph picking up the foul. Randolph second. Teams first of the quarter. Forty-seven, thirty-eight. Once was a fifteen-point advantage, cut within nine, and as they slice it away slowly, is Bobbitt. And Maya Smith went out there to attack and vacated a spot down low. Bobbitt was wide open. Nylea White will check in. Next dead ball for the Jags. Smith, baseline, no, and Cunningham with a rebound. Smith seems a little lethargic, a little slow right now to react. Didn't nice seem like she had a lot of confidence in that shot she'd released. Forty-seven forty as White checks in for Thompson. The lethal threat coming off the bench for the Jaguars. Leading score for the Jags as well. This is going to be an interesting play. Hopefully she can uh, make it throughout this game without... Uh, 
suffering any further uh, injury and can contribute as well. But courageous and gutsy by Nalia White to try to give it a go today. White looking aside to Smith and punches it out to Thagard. White to Thagard. Thagard steps back with plenty of distance. Could not fall. Falls right in the hands of Sabrina Lewis. Looking up the court as Coach England told her, stop doing too much. We can only do it one basket at a time. White forcing a third turnover. White too flat on the layup. And Patterson, fourth turnover. Jaguars with no turnovers here in the first and the second half. And four for Quatawba Valley. Four fifty-six. Smith gets it stripped by Bobbitt ahead to Hog. Four forty-eight left. Hog. Great defense by Patterson for the Jaguars. We got a media timeout. 47-40 Jaguars and Red Hawks square off on Jaguar Sports Network. Jaguars led by 15 at halftime as the Red Hawks on a 10 to 2 run the first 5 minutes and 18 seconds of the second half Jaguars still with the lead but not by as much as they once were setting at 45 to 40 at halftime it's 47 to 40 now it's been all Red Hawks as Hog will come into play at an immediate timeout Four turnovers for the Red Hawks as Patterson throw it right back in the face of Hogg. And those four turnovers are the reason why that Catawba Valley has walked this down from 15 to 7. And right there, Kayla Bell with the foul from behind. It's Kayla Bell's third foul. And we set the shot clock back to 20, and Hogg would like to come into play as she does. The Lynch. Hog on that right wing. Almost travels, but Patterson right on her. It's not letting her get no separation. Lynch gets the loose ball over to Bobby. Six on the clock on the shot clock. Lewis looking stutter step. Puts up a shot. Does not touch the rim at all. Lewis trying to do too much. Shaking and baking. The bacon ain't shaking. Sure was not, and that results in turnover number 18. See what the Jags have here. It looks like more of a uh, one, like a matchup zone now that they're playing a little more aggressive. Randolph taking the baseline. And Randolph tried to spin her way to the bucket, but then slid her left foot as her pivot foot. Couldn't control it. Turn number number 14 for the Jags. That's four in this half. Jaguars lead by seven, midway through the third quarter. Lewis's pass was cross court, but it's dangerous, danger zone. Especially when you got Melani Patterson just floating on defense. And Patterson's been using her length well today, stepping in passing lanes. You saw her completely knock down the inbounds pass last time down the side of the court. Defense has been a big story this game for Jack, uh, for Johnson Community College. Hogg was looking inside. 
but could not find Cunningham separation, so she took it herself. White, straight to the hole, gets clothesline. We got a late whistle. Yeah, Coach, Coach England does not appreciate that late whistle. 47 to 43, 24. We got a late call. Melani Patterson. Correction, that was White to the free throw line, and she gets her first points. Feels like it's been a month of Sundays since JCC got a bucket. Nalia White finally has moved that score and caught up from 47 to 48, but she can't convert the second. Jaguars lead eight. And another turnover for Cotaba Valley. That, dri that dribble by Hogg was high anyway. It should have been a carry call. Here comes Lewis. Trying to get separation ahead to bob it and bob it. Knew she weren't going to get the bucket, but drew, drew the foul, and it's the second on White. Make White, er, you know, you make uh, Bobbitt earn it at the free throw line. Don't mind White putting the hack on her, on uh, Angelina Bobbitt. Bobbitt makes the first. It's like you said before, Pete. It's our last broadcast before. Uh, Old Jolly St. Nick comes down everybody's chimney, so happy Hanukkah to everybody who celebrates, and Merry Christmas to all as well. Making both free throws within six. Three, two possession game. The top of Valley on a tear it here in the second half as Patterson puts together an offensive side. 48-42, Lynch drives, switches hands, and offensive board for Cunningham, and a put back, and she misses again. Once again, is Smith fighting. A team of Kings down low, and the Jaguars come out with the ball. Bell, looking over to Patterson. Patterson with the baseline, deep two, and that's four straight points for Patterson. Patterson has been on a tear this game. She's up to 20 right now, PD. 20 to teams, 52. Foul number three on Randolph. Two fourteen left, third quarter, 10-point advantage, Jaguars way. Just seven points in the third quarter for JCC as well. This Cunningham was wide open on the putback. No one contested her on the rebound. Back to an eight-point advantage, Jaguars. Yeah, Bobbitt went up, missed it, and then, just like you said, Cunningham, the recipient, easy putback. Long errant pass results in the 16th turnover for JCC. Six this quarter. Turnovers right now, PD, they stand 19 for Catawba Valley and 16 for JCC. Rebounding edge still belongs to the Jags. 27 to 22. Lynch steps in, hands it off to Hogg. Hogg is fouled by Patterson. It's Patterson's fourth. So Hogg continue her hot streak from the charity stripe and she stands in for two. So perhaps we'll see Thompson come off the bench to replace Patterson. Not yet though, Katie. They're gonna keep Thompson on the bench for the time being. Six-point lead, Jaguars 52-46. Jaguars been outscored this quarter 16 to seven. Another turnover, Jaguars back. It's Patterson right there to strip it from behind. Straight to the hole, and one. 
Maylani Patterson having a fantastic game. This time, takes the contact, gets the hoop and the harm. Got a timeout. Quatama Valley, 54 to 46. Fifty-four, forty-six, third quarter of action. Jaguars lead on Jaguar Sports Network. Coach Tisha England of the Red Hawks coming on the court to demand a timeout as she is lobbying for some of the calls. Her ladies aren't getting on the offensive side of the court. Also, Craig, she's very, very upset, wondering why the whistle seems one-sided in her opinion. You know, well, all she wants is some consistency. If you're going to call it on this side, call it on that side. But also that could be some sour grapes because of lack of execution by her team as well. 54-46. <laughs> left, third quarter. When games get tight like this, sometimes you start grasping for straws like that. Hey, when the execution's not there, you know, hey. Fifty-four, forty-six. Melani Patterson with her twenty-third point tonight. Hot shooting this game by Melani Patterson. She's been all over the court, offensively and defensively. Definitely one of the stars of the game for JCC. Hog baselines, no good. And here come the Jaguars, looking to extend their lead. Back Patterson. to 14. Patterson's still out there with four fouls. White straight to the hole too hard as she went up. Hog looking ahead. Patterson ahead to White. Back to an 11-point advantage. Jaguars. Melani Patterson started that sequence, and there she is again in her hands involved. But this is going to be the problem now as Patterson has five. I believe that should be her fifth and final. And now here comes Desaya Thompson to replace her. That's going to do it for Patterson. Patterson will end the game. Will not play the third. Uh, will not play the fourth quarter. She fouls out. 23 points for Melani Patterson. What an awesome game for her. Not an awesome free throw shot by Riley Hogg there. She misses everything. Was Hogg's second missed free throw. She misses her third. And off it's a, we got a jump ball. He stays right with the Red Hawks. Cunningham down low protecting the basketball. Had nowhere really to go. But jump ball in this situation favors Catawba Valley since they keep possession with 27 on the shot clock. No boxing out down low by the Jaguars on that free throw gave the Red Hawks the offensive board. Kayla Bell telegraphed that pass right there as well. She just couldn't control it. Now the Jags look like they're playing a 2-3 zone of their own. Hog trying to shake and make white. We have a travel by Lewis. 
Turnover number 22 for Catawba Valley. 17 for JCC. They've done a better job protecting the basketball, although Catawba Valley has outscored the Jags in this quarter. They've owned it. Jags have done enough to still push this lead to double digits. Maya Smith takes it a hole too hard off the backboard. Smith not on her game today right now. Just one of five from the field. Two points. Shot was off, but it does not count. We end the third quarter with a Jaguar run. Five to two. <laughs> Final 442 in the third quarter. The Jaguars won on a 12 8 run. They lead 57 to 46. Starting the fourth quarter here in Selma. Petey Doris, Craig Green here, courtside at Best Seed in House in Selma as the Jaguars and the Red Hawks square off for your first flight Federal Credit Union fourth quarter. Catawba Valley shot 6 of 15 in that third quarter, four of six from the line, did not attempt a three-point shot, and scored 16 points in the quarter compared to 12 for the Jags. Smith fighting, trying to clear it out, and misses two opportunities. I don't know, one of them wasn't a foul. Sound like we heard a slap over here on the sideline as Bobbitt misses the mid-range jumper and White pulls down the rebound. It's only saw a foul on Ballow that was not called. Long three. Touches every part of the rim as it falls out. Lewis crosses the nine-minute mark with the ball. Hog looking for separation on Kayla Bell. Left side to Lewis, inside to Balo. Balo travels. One too many steps, trying to back her man down. Yep, yeah, got somebody who's not handling the basketball that much, handling the ball down low, trying to pivot and maneuver in tight spaces and cause a turnover. 57-46, Jaguars. They with need a lead a, with a ball. They need a bucket right now really, really badly. I know we're only a minute and 15 into the uh, fourth quarter, but execution right now, it's paramount for them as Nalia White heard me, but she could not convert. Nalia White too hard on the layup. She would have nice take, though. You can't take it from her and take. Bobbitt's mid-range is cold. On the right side to Lewis. Lewis, nice setup. Could not convert on a wide open three and Randolph with a foul. Randolph with her fourth foul. Two big free throws coming up for Cunningham. Can push this three back to three possessions if she can make them both. She can't.
Thompson will check in for Kayla Bell. Fifty-seven forty-seven on the made free throw. Who will execute the best in the final ten minutes of this game, PD? That's who's going to determine the winner. Great defense by Hogg on Thagard pushes her out deep. Randolph looking inside with to Smith and it's not there. So the Jaguars still work the ball around a perimeter. Randolph with five on the clock with Thagard. Straight away three off the front of the iron. And Thompson. Fifty-seven forty-seven turnover Jaguars as Thompson travels as the horn sounded. Lewis back to Hogg. Hogg deep corner three. Offensive board as he reset the shot clock and a runner and with a put back and a foul. So Balo will head to the charity strike. And they're going to attack Nalia White with that foul. That's foul number three on her. Milo's free throw is good. Make it both free throws, get within eight. 57-49. What's with a 15 point advantage at halftime? 45 to 30. Jaguars struggling, being outscored in the set third quarter, 16 to two. But the last 442 belong to the Jaguars put up a 12-8 run. They did just enough to keep their lead but now they have to finish the job here, PD, and try to end this losing streak. Randolph getting the count and the Thagger. Lewis gets the screen by Smith. Inside to Smith. Smith on the mismatch. Goes up, draws the foul. Stays with it. Bucket will not count as the foul is on the first hit. I think Smith had been getting hit a couple times down low, and they finally called the foul. This one was attributed to Alexia Cunningham. So can Smith get some points at the line here? Ice water falls through. Ten-point game. It's an important defensive set for the Jags. With 6.55 to go in this contest. Looks like they're setting up at the 2-3 again. But it'll be important for them to make sure that they keep proper spacing. Don't let anybody get wide open. Lock in deep. Sabrina Lewis goes right side to Bobbitt. Bob looking for high screen. Left to Hogg. Hogg for three off the left wing. Brushes the iron, but right there to clean up the mess was Balo. Easy shot right there after Bobbitt hits nothing on the, on the three pointer. Nice screen by White. White straight to the hole, up and under, layup is good. Nifty move by Nalia White to slice and dice her way into the paint. Hog left side to Bobbin and Bobbin dribbles right off her knee. Turnover number 25 for Catawba Valley. Randolph with plenty of room as she drove. Kicks it to Smith. Way to maintain her dribble through the traffic, too. Smith with it up and under, could not finish. Stays right with it. Goes up. And to the floor 
is Balo and Smith. Sixty-one fifty-one Jaguars lead on Jaguar Sports Network. Thagard. Back out to Randolph. Randolph from the corner. Too hard. Smith. Could not finish. Six. Five forty-three left. Six on the clock. Randolph's teardrop, and it's a putback, Smith. Everybody stopped because they heard their shot clock buzzer. Maya Smith did not. She gets the rebound, puts it back. Lewis with a deep two. Now a turnover, PD, right away, immediately. The Red Hawks get the ball back. Bobbitt to Hogg. Lewis for three. Does not get a shooter's roll. Randolph to Thaggard. Crossing a five-minute mark. Ten-point advantage. And Hogg with the foul. You know, it should be called for the block. And that'll send Thaggard to the line for two free throws. Give her a chance to increase her point total. Media. Still, Still stuck on 11. Media timeout, 63-53. Jaguars Point advantage, Jaguars, 63-53, 457 left. Can the Jaguars close it out? Petey Doris and Craig Green will bring you coverage. Right here, the best seat in the house is the Jaguars. Thagger to the line. Really important free throws for Zaniah Thagger. She's uh, stuck on 11 points. So far, she's uh, 0 of 6 from the field in the third and fourth quarter. But clutch free throws are needed right now to kind of increase this lead and, and keep the, the red keep the Red Hawks at bay, but she can't convert the first. But this final 457, PD, well, how much will fatigue play a factor on each side? If you can hit 50% from the line, that's a whole lot better than none. Jaguars I mean, lead 64 to 53. I mean, you got May Lonnie Patterson who's fouled out, and Nalia White playing hurt. Hogg with a tight defense on Randolph and forces the turnover. Sabrina Lewis straight to the hole. He's able to get a bucket. Turnover to number 21 for the Jags. Dagger will unleash a three and it's nothing but nylon. Such a timely shot. That's what the, the uh, Jags needed right there is Anaya Thaggard, her fourth three of this game. And they'll take Nalia White with foul number four. This is the danger zone we're talking about, PD, right here. Nalia's got four. Patterson's already fouled out. If she fouls out, 
then Kayla Bell will have to play the remainder of the game. There will be no subs left for Coach Z. Misses the free throw opportunity. You know, White would have uh, been able to get one of the two. 67-56, 4.07 left. White only played his third and fourth quarter and already with four fouls. Very aggressive on the defensive side. Thompson's pass was deflected back in the backcourt by Bobbitt. Packard had to pick up her dribble because the, uh, the passing lane was closed off. And Coach Z called a timeout to avoid the five-second call on Thaggard. 20-second timeout. 67 to 56. Point advantage, Jaguars. It's Quatabba Valley. The Jaguars come out of timeout. 342 left. Got five on the shot clocks. Randolph long. Correction has Thagger with a long three. Hogg straight to the hole, switches hands, and Thagger with the lonely rebound. The offense. Randolph could not convert on an up and under layup. Hog looking ahead to Balo. Balo. Count it. She's got the soft bounce. Thought about falling off the top of the rim, but it decided to go down. And once again, Catawba Valley under double digits with the deficit. Not a good pass by Maya Smith. Smith with the lazy pass, turns it over. 2.53 left, fourth quarter inside, all alone. Non-contested as Maya Smith was late for Cunningham. And now it looks like Patterson at the scorer's table. I think they must have a correction on how many fouls she has. She must not have five. Nice runner by Nalia White in the paint. That's a bucket right there that Jags really, really needed. Bobbitt all alone on the shot and Hogg inside the Bobbitt and we have a foul. 69-56. Two minutes I'll tag Thompson with this foul. That's two subs coming in now for the for the Jags. As uh, Thaggard and Smith have a seat. And apparently Maylani Patterson has four. I thought she had five fouls. So my mistake, but she is back in the contest. See if they can finish out this final two minutes. It's a big free throw missed by Bobbitt. This is both free throws, 69 to 60. And there's Patterson making her presence felt, picking up right where she left off. 50 left, Lewis. Right for the path of Patterson. Pull that. 
kicks it to Randolph, and Randolph straight to the hole, put too much English. Whoa, look at Patterson. And right there, PD, that might have been. It's 27 points for Patterson. That might be the proverbial nail in the coffin for the Red Hawks. Nice well, might spoke too soon. Passing. Balo. Got a timeout, 73-62. Red Hawks with the timeout. <laughs> Back out of timeout, 73-62. Correction fouls on Maylani Patterson was four. Let her down is five, but our book is unofficial. Patterson, 29th point, and it's good. 75-62. Definitely the star of this game, Maylani Patterson, offensively and defensively for the Jags. Craig will have a courtside interview with Maylani Patterson and Coach Z at the conclusion of today's game. Whites fouled. She went up and she'll shoot two. This game is academic right here with 27 seconds left, 13 point lead. You see the momentum switches whenever Maylani Patterson is in the game, Craig. Patterson has had a huge, a huge, huge impact on today's game. And just like you said. You take just 15 of, 15 of her points away. Jaguars are on the opposite side of where they're at right now. 29 points for Patterson. Game high for sure. And an air ball by Bobbitt. Could be a season high for Patterson. Nothing like ending 2023 with a season high, 29 points going into the break. It's a Christmas says, present that unwraps itself just like that turnover does. Randolph finishes for the Jaguars. They get their biggest lead. Matches their biggest lead at 15. 10 seconds left. It's going to be a Merry Christmas for Coach Z and the Jags as they come away with a big, big win before the break, Petey. Lewis ends it on the miss three, 77-62. We're going to come right back here with a coach interview with Melani Patterson and Coach Z right after this. Jaguars win, 77-62.
vier. In arms for us. Right. This is right. So when uh, when uh, when the Red Hawks made a push here in the uh, in the third quarter, guys kind of had like a little bit of a lull. Tell me what the mindset was to uh, kind of clamp down and then put the uh, reins on it and finish this game off. I mean, my goal is just like you know, hands out defense, don't foul anymore because that's what like it took me out. But my goal is just like you know, play defense and then push through it. And Coach Z, we got a long break coming up here. So, what's it going to look like for for yourself as a coach and for your players? What's this going to break? What's this break going to be like for you guys? Uh, the break will be big. First, uh, I'm not the type of coach that uh, try to overwhelm my girls with practice, practice, practice during the Christmas break. I want them to go spend time with their families. Then we're going to come back in and get locked in in the gym. That's right. More Region 10 play to come up after the break. Maylani Patterson, thank you so much. Congrats on the win. Thank you. 29 points today, 77-62 win. Coach Z, thank you so much. Thank you. Back to you, PD. Thanks. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the Jaguars defeat Watauga Valley Redhawks, 79-62. We're going to come right back here with stats, facts, and figures and closing remarks right after a word from our sponsors.